and uh, she and her husband, and had met this um, very interesting little lady uh, who uh, had come to the meeting because she had begun to remember an experience that she felt she had to deal with, uh, that she wanted to talk to somebody. Uh, she had seen some video footage of starving children in Somalia or something like that. And they looked to have very large heads because the body was so emaciated. And she suddenly remembered uh, something that she'd sort of tried to put out of her mind for years, seeing these little bodies back when she was a young woman in her 20s, uh, a, a, a medical technician at a hospital, small hospital in uh, northern New Mexico. And so my friends had me get in touch with her, and I eventually uh, went down there and made a couple of trips dealing with her. Now, story that she told, and we'll let her tell it in her own words on, on tape, but essentially it was this, that she rode in the ambulance uh, whenever there was a, a call, an emergency. It was a tiny little hospital. You will see it, cement brick building. And as I mentioned at the beginning, that they received a call that there was a, an accident. That was all, nothing was explained, and the directions how to get there. And uh, she and the ambulance owner, um, or his son, she couldn't remember it was the father's son, one or the other would, would drive the ambulance. They went out, and that's where they saw these state troopers' cars parked up in the field, pretty barren area, there was nothing there. And when they drove up, that's when uh, they got out of the ambulance and saw these bodies. And uh, she asked, as I mentioned, you know, where are their parents? Well, at any rate, what happened very quickly is that uh, they bundled up the bodies and took them, two of them on a uh, gurney and the other one uh, on a stretcher, put them in the back of the ambulance, took them back to the hospital. And the state troopers had alerted the Air Force at that point. Now, these are people who were, and this was, you know, in, in the 60s. I, bl I believe the year was 66 now. This was a time when, of course, uh, the Cold War was in full swing, the war in Vietnam. These people were very patriotic. And so what happened was when the Air Force showed up at the hospital uh, and came in and removed the bodies, which she had already x-rayed, they took the x-rays. Uh, they took every scrap of everything you could imagine there that pertained to this incident. And they were told, this did not happen. You are not to remember it. The government has a long arm. They were quite intimidated. And uh, apparently, the bodies were only viewed by the doctor, who's no longer alive, at the hospital herself, the ambulance driver, uh, who seems to have been, if it was the father, also no longer living. But in terms of trying to run down other people, uh, and there seems to be one loose witness we're still trying to locate, in trying to uh, uh, run down any possibilities here, uh, we visited the widow of the man who owned the ambulance, who was probably the one who drove the ambulance. And this widow, even though her husband never told her anything about the incident, uh, because he was warned in the same way, uh, she said that she well remembers that that afternoon uh, the Air Force showed up and stripped the ambulance of everything on the back in, inside, the, the, any sheet, object, piece of paper, anything. And she said, I remember we, we never got paid by anybody for making the run on top of that. Um, she was a very believable witness, and her son, the, the son of the, could have been one of the ambulance drivers, but it turns out wasn't said that what, at the time he moonlighted as a police dispatcher, and he remembers talk uh, at the time of alien bodies. Uh, so th th there is a surrounding uh, group of people who can attest to at least parts of this. So if we can have the tape now, uh, you will see the beanie story. This is not something that has been uh, uh, finished in an absolute way. My wife is working on this as a videotape. Okay, okay. 
We're, we're the technician who wrote the ambulance, just normally. Yeah. That a phone call, like the phone call for this incident, would have come to the hospital from the police. Is that yeah. right? And then they just told you what? What do you remember they said that this was? They just said there'd been a, 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 an accident. And you, you had no idea that there was anything unusual about no, this? No, mm -hmm. but we had to walk a half a mile up to the... Would you have a kind of a wheel gurney? Or, yeah. Or, 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 uh -huh. Yeah. So then you, and what you were looking at when you were walking towards it, what were you seeing exactly? Just prairie as far as I'm concerned. But I mean, you saw two police cars, is that yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, then when I got up there, you could see this craft kind of crying up. It looked like when it come down, one half of it was just slight, you know, just into the mountain, mm -hmm. and the other half was sticking out. Uh -huh. And uh, the first thing you saw then beyond that were the bodies? Yeah, because they were, it was, uh, I guess the state policeman had pulled them out. They were laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I thought it was three children. Mm -hmm. When I first walked up there, and I said, well, where are the parents? Did they go for help? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we don't know what we've got here. And when I couldn't find a uh, pulse or a blood pressure or anything on them, I said, let's go back to town. I don't know what we've got either. Mm -hmm. So we loaded them up and went back to town. Mm -hmm. Uh, they still, this used to be the emergency. Well, it says emergency there. Uh huh. You think that's about where they brought them in before? Yeah, that's where we're going. Okay, well, let's pull up there so you can. When pulled in, remove the gurney. Did you go into the ER or? No, in, straight into the X. Straight the X. Said that little sister of Sumter come after us because things number one i come on with two on a stretcher yeah. and i didn't usually do that yeah and uh, uh she was pretty curious as to what was going on yeah and then dr young would come in and he was the one that examined them mm -hmm. and how tall would you say they would have been you said children let's uh, have a i'd say that uh, they were between three and four feet high mm -hmm. and uh Let's get a little, to a little description now. What, what, uh, I remember how, how, first, how badly damaged did they They consider? were buried. Okay. No. Uh -huh. And remember, I told you about the, uh, they had kind of their suits or their coveralls or yeah. whatever you want to call them, was made out of something like awning or something. We couldn't cut it with bandage scissors, and the only way we got it, Dutch had a knife, mm -hmm. and we got it nicked in and ripped it. Uh -huh. And uh, they did not have ears per se, and they did not have noses per se. Mm -hmm. They had orifices, mm -hmm. right. and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Were their faces uh, badly burnt? Uh, one of them was really, you could see a whole one if you put the three of them together. Right. You know what I'm trying to yeah, say. Exactly, yeah. And was the, the flesh blackened from, from the fire? Oh, yeah. It, it really was. Uh -huh. uh, now, where they had the suits on, uh -huh. we don't know because when we come off with yeah. the suits, their flesh had been so cooked yeah. that part of it come off with the suits. Yeah. The, uh, let's take the, the, the limbs, the, the hand, the, first, the, the hands arms and fingers. I only had three fingers. They didn't have a thumb. They just had like three, uh, about like that. Mm -hmm. Pain down. Were they shorter or longer, the same size as humans? Uh, no, they weren't as long as humans. They were more stubby and they uh, they just hung, uh -huh. more or less. Mm -hmm. And I don't imagine you took got to look at their feet. Uh, yeah, they had. They were. Their feet was built kind of the same way, but now their feet all were burned. Yeah. But it looked like they had three appendages um, instead of five or six yeah. or whatever. How long do you think it took the Air Force to get there after you b brought them in? And the police operator or the dispatcher called the hospital and he said, I've already notified the Air Force I'll yeah. be here in so many minutes. And right then I thought, oh, hell. You know, because uh, when they come in, they demand your full attention. They don't care what you've got going. <laughs> 
other one. You mm -hmm. know, but because we weren't back at the hospital very long, I bet they broke speed limit. Yes. Because by the time they pulled up, you know, they brought one staff car from Clovis, they brought two staff cars and an 18 wheeler out of Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. I remember that because they just took over the whole back. Well, how do you know they came from Albuquerque? Huh? Because they said they were. Oh, they said they were. So, some of them, they all come in and showed their ID yeah. and all. I got irritated with them when they started picking stuff up because they, they even, uh, well, they wanted even my x-ray. They wanted to take the wet x-rays, and I said, no, let me get them dry. This was back in the days before automatic yeah. processors and right. dryers and stuff. Uh -huh. So I got them dry. You know, well, you've been in the Texaco yeah, sure. warehouse. Yeah. We used to park the ambulances down underneath mm -hmm. there where those big garage doors mm -hmm. were. They even went down there and they picked up everything they could, even the sheets that I had over the bodies. Mm -hmm. They didn't leave us nothing. Mm -hmm. But the ambulance company was owned by the Johnsons? Uh-huh. And what kind of an ambulance was it? It was a 63 Ford converted uh, station wagon. Uh -huh. Back then, all we had, you know, it's not a rolling emergency room yes, like right. they've got now. Yeah. Back then, we had uh, a lot of speed and a little bit of oxygen, and that was all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had a hollow and everything. How did they move the bodies from? The, uh, like I said, they had like a rock box, and they brought them. They brought the boxes in and loaded them right, right off of my X-ray table, right into these boxes, and took the boxes out to the 18 wheeler. What was the, the boxes that were they just like a simple? Uh, well, uh, box, yeah, like a box? rock box that yeah. you would put the casket in. You know yeah. what I'm right. But it looked like something they were used to doing. This is an extremely important thing. It really is important if it happened. Uh, do you remember what we came here for before? No, I, the, the no, crash no. And, the, uh, and the, either your husband or your son was driving the ambulance that uh, and Danny I, was. We never decided which, which one was driving. Probably so. No, I think it was Jimmy. And I think Walter scared him so bad with that tape recorder and all. He didn't want to admit it. As I remember before, you said you remembered some conversation. Well, I remember. Of course, I kept books. Uh -huh. And uh, Well, remember the last time we were here, Jimmy took us down to the warehouse and he let us get your old journal out, you know, your log run. And I still say there's two pages missing. Well, it, all, it's all gone now. I sold the warehouse. Oh, you did? Who's got it now? Uh, Gilbert Compton's the one that has the grocery store. Oh, okay. So we both remember about Rudolph. He got so upset because he thought the Air Force up overstepped their bounds, didn't he? <laughs> yes, remember? I and I remember <laughs> that. Uh -huh. You remember that? That they ever even talking about it? That, yeah. That they were. What were they doing? That you remember? That you know, only that he said. Did. You know what? I think the Air Force came in and took over and they. Oh yeah, they picked that so ambulance clean. And went all through the ambulance and everything. But I just remember that he was upset. He was upset about well, that. Well, rem remember, I never started the chart until I got back here to where there was a doctor. I just used scrap yeah. paper. Boy, they cleared that out in a minute, didn't but, they? But do you remember uh, anybody saying anything about aliens? No. Bodies? I don't remember any of that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, keeping the books and we're not talking about, just, you know, he didn't think they had any business just coming in. Why did he think, uh, why did you think the Air Force? Uh, I didn't give it another thought. Had gone through I the was so used to these rare situations. But, you know, and, and uh, he and Jimmy discussing it, but not, it didn't. Uh, but but he, she asked him, is that it for records? Or see if they had well, they did take the trip ticket, remember? Yeah, they did get that. Yeah, they took, and that's when he really got upset. He said, how am I supposed to claim to Uncle Sam I even made this trip? I don't trip. think we ever collected it. I don't think we ever, we didn't have anybody send the bill to. Because <laughs> yeah. the, but, the uh, but did he say to you why did he thought the Air Force no. was doing this? Not to me. Mm -hmm. And I, they might, I've been, might have been sitting there, but 
<laughs> in that particular industry. You know, Mr. Johnson, I, of course, didn't know your, your husband. Or, well, but I'm curious. He's a fine man. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, but he was also a man that he kept everything. I mean, you almost had to pry something out of him if you wanted it. Didn't well, that's you? what I'm asking. He and Jim, we just didn't. Uh, but like I said, if you'd have known Rudolph, he was a man. When he found out something, if he had been told, it don't go no farther. Yeah. It don't go no farther, including yep. his wife. That was the way he was. And, yeah. yeah. You know, if this happened last year, it'd be different. Uh -huh. We're talking a long time ago. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, 34 years ago. You know, something. everybody has said the same thing I have said. Everybody that's tracking stuff down has said the same thing I did. That, uh, Air Force really gives you a false idea that they've got all the control of everything. I know it's the threat of control that works for them. It's yeah. not having control. I mean, I never will forget that guy standing there. He had scrambled eggs on his hat and a chest full of ribbons. And, uh, his name was Hickman. Higby or something like that. I can't remember. Do you know what rank? Colonel. He was a Colonel. Colonel, full bird Colonel. I never will forget that. That's the one that said uh, when he walked out the back door, I never will forget, he turned about halfway back around and he said, today has never happened. We have never been here. You're supposed to forget everything that, that has occurred today and don't forget the government has a long arm. Did he give any reason why this, they, he was saying that? No, he didn't. Did he say? I guess he thought no explanation necessary. Yeah. I was young enough that I didn't question it when they told me to yeah. keep my mouth shut. Right. You know? Yeah. So. Uh, but how about you talking about it? Did anybody that's talk what I said. Dr. It, Galvin. It got to where, I mean. Well, after that bird colonel standing there, yeah. I don't know whether it was fear, whether it was just we didn't want to think about it. You know, you kind of out of mind, out of out of sight, out yeah. of mind, you know, or what. But no, we never discussed it. Uh -huh. Do you think that's odd? Yes, sir. Well, I, I told you that before I thought yeah. it was. Because usually when we've had an unusual or a bad smash up or something, yeah. we talk about it for two or three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't this time. And it was almost like a, a silent mm -hmm. consent that everybody just shut their mouth about it. Uh, Higley or Higby or Hickman? Hickman. Something like that. Smith is tough. Yeah. But, yeah. but Sandia couldn't he, find course. Uh, after so they, had, after yeah. they had gone down and picked the ambulance clean, and come back and said, because I told them, you ain't taking that. They wanted my x-rays wet and on the hangers. I said, no, I'm not giving you the hangers. You come back out when the x-rays are dry. <laughs> oh, they went that. out to the site. And picked, we went out to the site later. And I mean, they had picked it clean. You mean you and Jimmy went out or you uh -huh. and somebody? Uh -huh. Well, you know, we, we tend to forget that the government, the Air Force in particular, because of the nature of the beast, has rapid recovery teams ready to go to locations where there are airplane crashes, because there may be classified mm -hmm. equipment on board, well, I... ready to go where there are truck crashes with sophisticated equipment, nuclear stuff, all, all kinds of things. And there are people whose job it is, just as described in SOM yeah. 1.01, is to pick up, clean up, Everything. get rid of, Let's look a little differently at this. So we've got her, but we also have the sheriff's family. I mean, the uh, cops. And mm -hmm. Who else? Oh, the, the druggers. Uh, druggers. Okay, there's targets, but that's a target. And, and you see, and with a nice name. name. Yeah. Wasn't he connected with the police department at some point? No. The name of Yule Barry was sheriff. And then Manuel, for, okay. and then Manuel's younger brother, I believe his name is Trini Ulibarri. What do you spell that last yeah. name? U L I B R R. Let's see. I think that's that's it. As, as so far, we can have the lights. <clears throat> now, this is, I say, is a work in progress uh, that my wife's been 
working on, and we were trying to find some more information. Um, I just want to say one thing about uh, her credibility. She remembered the name of the police officer, uh, state police officer, who she knew well. She called him Dutch on the tape, who was there uh, recovering the bodies. And when she went to this MUFON meeting and met the folks who passed the story on to me, uh, the husband at that meeting of, of the woman who uh, I'd worked with was a retired state police officer. And she immediately asked him, did you know Dutch, uh, whatever his name was? And he said, yes, I knew him somewhat. And she said, I've got to find him because he was there. And they started a, a search for this Dutch. Now, when you make up a story, you don't say so-and-so was there and I want to try to find him. Because if you find him, the guy said, what are you talking about? I, was, I don't remember anything like that. You're in a spot. But she was definite, and she became a kind of tigress trying to find, uh, that locate this man Dutch. And what ha happened actually was uh, when they did locate him, he's long since retired, he was in the hospital with a heart attack. And she wanted to go to the hospital and interview him in the hospital room, uh, which we wish had happened. And before that could happen, uh, he passed away. And she ended up going to the funeral, and uh, even though she hadn't seen him for years and years, trying to talk to his widow to see what she could find out. So this is a woman who, who gave us the name of the man who was there and really, really tried to run him down and said he was the uh, state police officer in charge. So it's another sign of her credibility. Uh, now, you can make up your own mind about what you think about Beanie. She's an odd lady. But, uh, and she did not want the Air Force to take her wet x-rays out of there, or the hangers, which is just one of those little details which uh, uh, is not self-glorifying, but granted her personality is something you can imagine she would very easily have said.